Welcome to a lesson on solving linear inequalities in one variable. Here are the steps we use to solve a linear inequality in one variable. These steps look almost exactly the same as solving a linear equation in one variable, except there's a big difference in step four. In step four, when we multiply or divide both sides to isolate the variable, we need to be very careful. If we multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, we must reverse the inequality symbol or inequality sign. And let's take a look at why we have to do this. If we start with the true inequality, two is greater than negative two, let's see what happens when we multiply and divide both sides by a positive two and a negative two. Let's first divide both sides by positive two. If we divide both sides by positive two, we would have a one on the left and a negative one on the right. In this case, if we use the original inequality symbol, the greater than symbol, the inequality is still true. One is greater than negative one. So if we divide by a positive, we do not reverse the inequality symbol. But let's try dividing by a negative. But now let's try dividing by negative two. If we divide both sides by negative two, we now have a negative one on the left and a positive one on the right. And if we use the same inequality symbol, we would have negative one is greater than positive one, which we know is not true. So to make the inequality true, because we divided by a negative, we must reverse the inequality symbol, so we use less than instead of greater than. Negative one less than one is true. So if we divide by a negative, we must reverse the inequality symbol. Now let's look at multiplication. Let's first multiply both sides by positive two. This would give us a four on the left and a negative four on the right. If we use the same inequality symbol, we would have four is greater than negative four, which is true. So if we multiply both sides by a positive, we do not reverse the inequality symbol. Let's try multiplying by a negative. If we multiply both sides by negative two, we would have a negative four on the left and we'd have a positive four on the right. If we use the original inequality symbol, we would have negative four is greater than positive four, which is not true. So because we multiplied by a negative, we must reverse the inequality symbol and use less than. Negative four is less than positive four. So if we multiply both sides by a negative or divide by a negative, we must reverse the inequality symbol. Let's go back and look at our first example. Here we want to solve three x greater than x plus six. So again, we'll solve this just like we solve an equation, except if we multiply or divide by a negative, we'll reverse the inequality. So notice how we have x terms on both sides. Let's get the x terms on the left side. So let's go ahead and subtract x on both sides of the inequality. Simplifying, we have three x minus x, or three x minus one x, that would be two x, greater than x minus x is zero, so the right side is just six. And now we have two x greater than six, so we'll divide both sides by positive two to isolate x. So we have one x, or x, is greater than six divided by two equals three. So this is our solution. Let's also graph the solution set and give the solution set using interval notation. And we'll graph this two ways. In the first way, we'll use brackets or parentheses, and for the second method, we'll use open or closed points. So we want to graph x is greater than three. So we want to graph all the numbers that are to the right of three, but notice how this interval does not include three, only values that are greater than three. So for using parentheses or brackets, we'd use a rounded parenthesis on three, opening toward the right, because we're looking for the values greater than three, so now we'll graph to the right, and we're approaching positive infinity. Again, this rounded parenthesis means three is not included in this interval. Now, if we're using open or closed points, we'd use an open point on three to show three is not included, and then graph to the right. And now you're using interval notation. The interval is from three approaching infinity. It does not include three, so we use a rounded parenthesis. And for infinity and negative infinity, we always use a rounded parenthesis. So here's our solution as an inequality, as a graph, and also using interval notation. Let's look at example two. Looking at example two, the first step is to clear the parentheses on the right, so we'll distribute positive two here. So we have three minus five a less than or equal to two a 
plus 10. Notice how we have A terms on both sides. So let's have the A terms on the left and the constants on the right. So for the next step, let's go ahead and subtract 2A on both sides. Simplify. So we have 3, and then negative 5A minus 2A is negative 7A, less than or equal to, on the right we have 2A minus 2A, that's 0. So on the right we just have 10. Next step, we want to isolate the variable term, so we'll subtract 3 on both sides. Simplify. 3 minus 3 is equal to 0, so now we have negative 7A is less than or equal to 10 minus 3 is equal to 7. Now we want to isolate the A, negative 7A means negative 7 times A, so now we divide both sides by negative 7, but because we're dividing by a negative, remember, we need to reverse the inequality symbol. On the left side, we have 1A or just A. We reverse the inequality symbol, so instead of less than or equal to, it's greater than or equal to, and then 7 divided by negative 7 is equal to negative 1. So here's our solution. Let's go ahead and graph it. Since A is greater than or equal to negative 1, notice this time negative 1 is in the interval. So because negative 1 is in the interval, for using parentheses or brackets, we would have a square bracket on negative 1 opening to the right, and then we'd graph to the right. For using open or closed points, we'd have a closed point on negative 1 and graph to the right. In both cases, the endpoint on the left is included in the interval. For interval notation, the interval starts at negative 1. It includes negative 1, so we use a square bracket, and then it approaches positive infinity. We always use a rounded parenthesis on infinity and negative infinity. Let's look at one more example. Our first step here is to clear the parentheses, so we'll distribute negative 5 here and negative 3 here. So we have negative 5x, negative 5 times 2 is negative 10, so minus 10, greater than or equal to negative 3x, negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, so we have minus 12. Now we want the x terms on one side and the constants on the other. So to undo this negative 3x, we'll add 3x to both sides. And because we want the constants on the right side, let's also add 10 to both sides at the same time. So here we're sort of combining two steps in one. So on the left side, we have negative 5x plus 3x, that's negative 2x. And then we have negative 10 plus 10, that's zero. So we have negative 2x is greater than or equal to, on the right side, we have negative 3x plus 3x, that's zero. And then we have negative 12 plus 10, which is equal to negative 2. To isolate the variable on the left side, notice how we need to divide both sides by negative 2. So again, because we're dividing by a negative, we're going to have to reverse the inequality symbol. So on the left, negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. So we have 1x or x is not greater than or equal to, but less than or equal to negative 2 divided by negative 2 is positive 1. So the solution is x is less than or equal to positive 1. Let's go ahead and graph this. Notice we want to graph all the values that are less than or equal to positive 1. So we want to include positive 1 and all the values that are to the left or less than 1. So we'll use a square bracket on positive 1 opening to the left and then graphing to the left approaching negative infinity or if we're using open and closed points, we would have a closed point on positive one and an arrow to the left. Using interval notation, we're approaching negative infinity on the left and one on the right. The interval includes one, so we use a square bracket here. It doesn't include negative infinity, so we have a rounded parenthesis here. I hope you found this helpful.